Hello everyone and welcome to another Blender Diploma tutorial. In this tutorial it's going to be mostly about compositing and there is a new node in Blender since a very recent version and that is called a double edge mask. And I have uh, used this double edge mask in a node group over here. There's two of them to combine them and also we have some color correction going on and we have um, an effect called Kirsch or Kirsch, not sure, and that is being used to make those purple lines here. So all in all, we're trying to sort of stylize this human head, and um, I try to make it look somewhat like a thermal camera. So with all that being said, let's um, delete this entire node setup so we can start fresh. For those of you unfamiliar with the compositor, if you don't see anything here in the node window, this one, the node editor, if you don't see anything, check use nodes and then you will get these two nodes by default. And you can, with shift A output viewer, you can insert a, another node. And then if you shift control click on this one, it will connect the viewer to the out, uppermost output of this node and if you want to see your image in the background then you'll have to click backdrop which I find is very nice and you can see this node is displaced down here displayed down here and this node is displayed in the background of our nodes okay so I'll first want to sort of not really distort in German you say in strange or something I want to make this picture a little bit more strange than when it, what it used to look like. Okay, so the invert node will do the trick to start us off with getting this character to be a little more serial. And as a second node, I'm going to use a color balance. I could use a lot of different nodes to achieve that effect, but this is a very, very important node. It's been found, or it is found, in a lot of other software like uh, Photoshop and GIMP and After Effects. And pretty much every program that has something to do with color will at some point operate with this node. And the way it does work is this here controls the high tone. So everything that's fairly bright in the image will be tinted by whatever value I put in here. So if I leave this white and middle then nothing's going to be changed. So I'm going to make this orangey in order to make our character or our head here look a little more on fire and I'll make the mid-tones very red actually let's go back one step anyways if I tint these orange as such you can see that the entire picture gets um, influenced by that but you can also see that the bright areas get influenced a lot more than the dark areas and if I continue doing this by putting this on red Actually, actually, let's put this on green for the comparison. You can see that the bright areas get influenced a lot less than the darker areas. Meaning those color wheels here overlay or, um, well, they mix, but this one will affect the mid-tones a lot stronger than this one will affect them. And also the high tones will be affected a lot more by this way. And, of course, those are the dark tones, so let's get them nice and orangey color as well. I think we can live with that. So next thing I want to do is use this new double edge mask and it's found under matte double edge mask. You'll find the new node here and I'm going to duplicate this viewer shift D and um, control shift okay <laughs> I keep forgetting this. Anyways if you duplicate a viewer, the other one is still active. Yeah, that's something I keep mixing up. But uh, this is um, just to show you how the double edge mask works. It needs two inputs. And they both need to have an alpha canal. So the outer mask will be the bigger mask and the inner mask will be the smaller mask. And Blender will sort of calculate a ramp in between the two. Which means that 
if the outer mask was this shape and the inner mask was a circle over here, then Blender would calculate a nice gradient from the human to the circle in the middle. And since this theory is hard to follow, I imagine, let's just put it to use. I'll use a filter called Dilate Erode and drag it into the inner mask. So right here. And to show you what the Dilate Erode filter does immediately, I'll connect it to the viewer and set this to minus 100. And it's gone. And that is because this image is set to 50%. If this was set to 100%, minus 100 would not make the picture disappear. But you can see now that um, the Dilate Erode node takes an edge between black and light, white, for example, and then sort of shrink it. It's a little like scaling along the normals in edit mode, if that makes any sense. Now you can see I'm using a different input for the inner mask than for the outer mask. So in theory, Blender should calculate between the two and make a nice soft transition. But this is not the case. So what happened? The double edge mask, and I found that out the hard way, the double edge mask needs an actual alpha channel. So you can see the alpha channel is black and white, but apparently there still is some alpha in there. <laughs> Not sure how to say this better, but you need an, uh, an input with an alpha channel for the double edge mask. And what's happening now is the outer mask does actually get a channel with an alpha, but the upper mask will get a black and white image. So the lower mask will try to stretch this mask across the entire image because that is what it thinks is the actual case. The inner mask is now the entire image and the outer mask is just the head. So this is the most, most stretching that this node allows and that's why it looks so weird and bloated. So we'll have to find a way to work around that. And we're going to do that with a converter color ramp in front of the double edge mask. And just to have a little more overview, I'm going to maximize this window. Unfortunately, you can't see the keys anymore, but that doesn't matter. I'm just going to explain what I'm doing. So I um, put some of that stuff out of the way and I'm going to insert the color ramp in between the dilate erode and the double edge mask. And now you can see the entire thing is white. And um, let's flip these. And of course, still everything is white because there's no alpha channel here. So actually flipping them was not the best idea. But select this color and change the alpha to be zero. And now you can see we're getting a really nice result. And you have to be careful right now because the color ramp actually has an image output and an alpha output. If you use the image output, it will stretch the image across the entire picture again. And this is what we get from this. And let's now tint this ghosty figure. So I'm using a color mix node and put it right in between. And we'll take our orange guy and it gets white in the middle. And why is that? The reason is we're mixing red and white and we're mixing it by a factor that is given by the double edge mask. So wherever the double edge mask is white, the lower color will, will appear, and wherever this is black, the upper color will appear, which is pretty much exactly what we wanted. Except for, I don't want this to be white, I want this to be blue. So now we're starting to get something that looks like the thermal image I was going at. But we have a lot, uh, we have to repeat the entire process for the green in the middle as well. And of course, I don't want to duplicate all those nodes. That would get fairly hard to overview fairly fast. So what I'm doing is I'll duplicate this color ramp and put it in between here. This shouldn't change a thing because it's just from alpha to white. And it doesn't, which is perfect. Then I'll arrange these a little better. And um, I'll select all of them by holding shift, all these, and press control G, and that will convert them into a group. And you can access the node group later by pressing tab. And let's organize this group. What we need is one mask input because our dilate erode node will take care of the rest. You can see we can use this same input to be down here 
and thereby deleting this channel, which is perfect, because we want as few input channels as possible. And then we want the color to be mixed with to be accessible from over here, so we get one more field. We also need the image node. We need to leave it right where it is. So if we have a look at this, we have an image that goes in, a color to be mixed with that image, and a mask as an input and output we have an image with two colors or let's say with one color more than the image going in and one great thing about node groups is you can save them or it does that automatically and you can add a group node group just like that so let's drag this node group in between here let's just change the color to green and see what happens we also need a mask of course that should override the entire blue by green which is not exactly what we want, but it's definitely a step in the right direction. Now, one thing to be careful with, if I edit this group here, this is the same as materials and textures. This has two users. So if I, anything I edit over here will also get changed in this node group. So whenever they are the same, of course, the one behind will color the image and this will have not much of an effect. So I'll have to click the single user button. And now I'll change this to minus 75. You might have to change those values depending on the size of your rendered image. So uh, this is starting to look a lot like the thermal image I was going for, but the face is gone. So there's something I don't like. So we'll have to change this. Let's insert another filter filter and sort of use it to restore the edges of the image. So let's insert the image and to be able to see what we're doing, I'll connect this viewer to the filter. And so, oh, okay, the, um, it's automatically connected to the factor. You have to be careful with that. Sometimes this happens. And of course, the soften image, the soften filter actually uh, just softens the image. Surprise, surprise. So let's change this to Kirsch. And you can see Kirsch sort of um, finds edges and makes them weird. So I... Uh, I checked with a couple of effects and this one seemed to be the nicest. So let's uh, just play with these values a little so we get as much contrast as possible. And then let's uh, use a color mix node again. And I want to mix this image with the color purple, something like that, by a factor of this. So wherever this is white, the image will turn purple but we have to enable this viewer. Okay, this is starting to look a lot better. Let's make this a little bit less saturated. Darker maybe, all right. So this is looking quite good, except for the blue rim that we don't want. So uh, let's put the filter, dilate, erode. Let's put that behind the Kirsch effect and uh, decrease it just slightly. And you can see that the dilate, erode actually uh, attacks all the black and white uh, parts and uh, let's get a color RGB curves and you have to be careful if you drag the RGB curves in between something that has an output that's black and white it will automatically connect it to the factor it's not what we want we want it to be connected to the image and then we can change it. So whenever you're using uh, factors that are black and white maps, it's usually a good idea to put a curve behind them. So let's try this again. Use this as a factor. And our blue rim is gone. Okay, we can also check if we increase the distance. Nope, it's coming back. So yeah. Um, this is basically the way I went with it. You can see by um, changing these dots, we can change the overall purpleness of the image, but this should do quite nicely. So you can see we're almost done, but we don't have a background. And if I change this from, uh, this is displaying the alpha as a grid, and this is displaying the actual background, so I should just be able to, to use a color alpha over 
and then choose something like blue as my color so I have a completely cold background you can of course put elements in the background and use them the same way I did with this character and if I drag this in there this should use the image with the alpha uh, the image without the alpha channel and put it on top of a blue background or we'll actually have to do it this way but you can see something really weird happen and that is even though the background color is blue it gets tinted red actually no it doesn't so I have to be honest with you I do not know where this color comes from the orange but I did find a way around that and the easiest way to do that is just use a color nope a filter blur node then drag our original alpha mask into this and blur it out and use it as a factor over here and um, it's not blurred yet so you can see it's getting a little crowded in here and uh, now you can see it's doing exactly what we wanted it's got a blue a green background and we have a tiny bit of an edge over here and this is why I got the blur node let's put this to two or something and that's actually making things worse okay that is because the dilated road mask I think if you render this at full resolution this should actually work quite nicely looks like we have to cheat a little bit again and let's use a filter dilated road you can see this is starting to become one of my favorite masks now the node okay now we have a very subtle shine around the character you can of course uh, change a lot of those settings but I think I'm going to go with this one now so keep in mind the dilated road node is not relative to the image size you can make the fast Gaussian relative to the image size but if you now change this to 100% you'll probably have to change a few of those values especially those okay and for all of you that now think if I can just blur a mask why should I use a double edge mask for those of you I have a little bit of a tip let's use a mesh let's just use a monkey she's been overused but I don't care this is just the begin the end of the tutorial just to get you a little bit more of an understanding of what I'm doing here or what this node is for I'm going to put the circle on layer 3 and the monkey stays on layer 2 then I'm going to go into the render layers over here let's start fresh this is just rendering layer number two and let's uh, this only renders layer three they're both enabled so let's render this I'll actually save this one okay you can see all my nodes are now um, are being applied to my monkey I don't want that so let's um, this is our render layer input let's duplicate that and change the render layer input to this one and you can see one has the monkey one has the circle and if I now use the dilated road node color uh, fill no I'm sorry not the dilated road this time it's a double edge mask again I'm using this as the inner mask and this as the outer mask let's switch those and if you have a look in the viewer here you can see that it's actually creating a mix of the two let's make the circle a little smaller and render this again no render output node okay let's change that output composite I accidentally deleted that one too okay now you can see that there is a transition between the two and you should be careful which one is the inner which one is the outer you can see that destroys your result and if I now put this circle all the way around the monkey we have to switch the two switch those two oh this is using the image again that doesn't work and you can see we now have a mix of the sphere and the monkey so this was the double edge mask for you I hope you learned something and I hope you learned something about how to 
organize your compositor using groups. So uh, I hope you'll also tune in next time. And until then, my name is Frederik Steinmetz, and this has been for BlenderDiplom.com.